Today I'm going to be answering the question that actually came from one of you guys is what is the best point of sale system for an ice cream shop? And to give you the short answer, it's this point of sale system that I'm going to show you today. However, this point of sale system works really well if you have a quick service restaurant or a takeout restaurant. So let's dive into it. So this is the point of sale system itself. It is a swivel stand point of sale system. Um, so you can tilt it up and down. It's also going to come with a cash drawer, uh, a receipt printer, and then a card reader as well. If we go ahead and flip the POS around, it's also going to have a customer facing display as well as the card reader side to it. So your customers can tap to pay, they can dip their card here, or they can swipe right there. We're going to touch on this in a little bit, um, but let me flip this around and let me show you the actual POS itself. All right, so hopefully you can see this. When you come to this screen, this is gonna be your login screen. Employees can either punch in their code or they can swipe their employee access card right here. It's basically a little card that gives them access to the POS instead of typing in their code. So what we're gonna do, I don't have the card with me right now, so I'm just gonna punch in the code. And then right here on this screen on the left side is going to be where you reopen your previous tickets. There's also going to be a completed orders tab. So, you know, if you're taking 100 customers per day, there's gonna be 100 different orders that are completed that'll pop up on this screen. Also, online orders as well, if you choose to take orders online. I know it's a little tricky with an ice cream shop because by the time your customer places the order, drives and picks it up, the ice cream could be melted. So, you know, you may not use that tab. And then here on the open tab, what we can do is we can either choose an existing order, and typically orders are gonna pop up here. For example, say somebody comes and they're right about to check out, but then they forgot their wallet in their car. You can hold that order right there for them, so that way when they come back into the store, you just pull it up and then they can go ahead and pay. If it's a new customer, you go ahead and click on new ticket. And I broke it down into certain departments, right? So. In the first one, you have scoops, so you're physically scooping up ice cream and putting it either in a cup or a cone. Then we're gonna have ice cream bars, so ice cream bars that are already made, you pick it up, you sell it for a certain price. Also cafe, so if you sell drinks, coffee, espresso, teas, anything like that uh, is under cafe. And then desserts is gonna be anything that's like a pastry or a cake or a pie something like that that's already pre-made. So say for example, a family comes in and the wife wants two scoops of ice cream. So we're gonna go ahead and click on two scoops. And as you can see, there's three different, I would say categories or three different modifiers. The first one is if they want a cone or a bowl. The second one is what flavor is that ice cream? And then the third one is gonna be for different sorts of toppings on top of the ice cream. So for the first one, is it a cone or a bowl? What we can do is <clears throat> if we select on bowl, there's no additional charge. However, if they want a sugar cone, it's 50 cents, or if they want a waffle cone, it's an additional dollar. So you can assign different prices depending on what that modifier is. And then also for the cone or the bowl section, they can only select one. They can't select sugar cone and waffle cone, right? If if they wanna select waffle cone, but then switch over to sugar cone, it's actually gonna delete it from right here and sugar cone is gonna pop up. So you can't select two items for this one particular category. However, for the ice cream flavors, because this is a two scoop ice cream, they're allowed to select two. So for example, chocolate chip and vanilla. But if they, your employee tries to select a third ice cream, for example, coffee, this error is gonna cop, come up and it's gonna say, you can only select two modifiers, not three. So this is gonna prevent your employees from either overcharging or from giving away product that uh, you, you definitely don't wanna give away product. And then so for the ice cream toppings, these are optional, so you don't have to select them. However, we can go ahead and add them on our order and you can choose to either not charge for these extra toppings or to charge additional for those extra toppings, all right? And then let me just give you another example here. So for the three scoops, same exact thing for the bowl, they can only select one, but here they can actually select chocolate chip, pistachio, 
and strawberry, so they can select three because it's a three scoop item. Or if they try and select a fourth item, of course they get the error um, saying that this is only three, three scoops in this one particular product. All right, and then same thing with toppings. They can go ahead and select the toppings that they do or don't want. So if we actually go ahead and flip our screen around here. All right, so here is the customer facing display side. Your customer can scroll to see exactly what's in their order. So on the first one, we have two scoops, sugar cone, chocolate chip, vanilla, sprinkles, caramel, drizzle chocolate. And then the second item is three scoops in a sugar cone, chocolate chip, pistachio, strawberry, and sprinkles. All right, so as you can see down below, there's actually two prices listed. It's a cash price of $14 or a card price of $14.56. And we do it this way because every time your customer is paying for an item, if they pay with a card, your customer is paying for those credit card processing fees, so that way you don't have to pay for them. So if you're doing $40,000 per month at your, your ice cream shop, that's gonna save you about, I would say about $1,000 per month just doing it this way alone. So if your customer actually pays with a card, your customer pays the 56 cent processing fee, and you actually get deposited $14 in your bank account. So it doesn't matter which way they pay. If they pay cash, you get $14, or if they pay card, you're getting $14 in your bank account, and then your customer pays for that 56 cent processing fee. Okay, so now we have to go ahead and take payment from our customer. What we can do is we can either take cash, we can take checks, credit cards or debit cards, gift cards, gift certificates, or if they walk out with product on accident, you can also put that button here um, just so you can keep track of everything. Now, if you don't accept checks or you don't accept gift cards, we can always remove those items. Um, but say, for example, our customer, they wanna pay cash, we can either punch the number in that they give us, or there's pre-selected buttons right here. So if they give us a $20 bill, we just go ahead and hit that $20. If they wanna pay with card, we hit credit right here. And then on this side, on the customer facing display side, there is also an option for tip as well. So if your customers wanna leave a tip, they can do so. So for example, they hit custom tip, say they wanna give us $1, they go ahead and submit that. Now their total is $15.56. What your customer can now do is they can tap right here and that's tap by either card uh, or their phone if they have Apple Pay or Google Pay. They can also take their credit card and dip it right here on the top, or they can slide it right here. Um, so after you take that payment, you're pretty much ready for that next customer. Um, and that's as simple as this point of sale system can get. There is some more reporting and, and detailed stuff on the back end if you wanted to get you know, that specific, but it's, it's all the basics that you need in a point of sale system to run your ice cream shop.